Hey, good afternoon, friends. Thought I would share a devotional with you today. I thought today I'd bring a little fire as I'm going to share with you from chapter one of Why Revival Tarries by Leonard Ravenhill. Those of you who are familiar with Ravenhill will admit that uh, if there's one thing that he is not, and that is boring, Ravenhill is one of the most fiery um, evangelists that I've ever listened to. Of course, he passed several years ago, I think in the 80s, if I remember correctly. But the foreword in this book is written by A.W. Tozer, which is interesting. This book was published in 1959. Um, so actually, this was the fourth edition published in uh, 61. But uh, anyway, so thought I would just share with you, this is especially uh, fitting for pastors. But uh, he says, uh, so the title of chapter one is, With All Thy Getting, Get Unction. And he says, The Cinderella of the church of today is the prayer meeting. This handmaid of the Lord is unloved and unwooed because she is not dripping with the pearls of intellectualism, nor glamorous with the silks of philosophy, neither is she enchanting with the tiara of psychology. She wears the homespuns of sincerity and humility, and so is not afraid to kneel. The offense of prayer is that it does not essentially tie in to mental efficiency. That is not to say that prayer is a partner to mental sloth in these days. Efficiency is at a premium. Prayer is conditioned by one thing alone, and that is spirituality. One does not need to be spiritual to preach, that is, to make and deliver sermons of homiletical perfection and exegetical exactitude. By a combination of memory, knowledge, ambition, personality, plus well-lined bookshelves, self-confidence, and a sense of having arrived, brother, the pulpit is yours almost anywhere these days. Preaching of the type mentioned affects men. Prayer affects God. Preaching affects time. Prayer affects eternity. The pulpit can be a shop window to display our talents. The closet speaks death to display. The tragedy of this late hour is that we have too many dead men in the pulpits giving out too many dead sermons to too many dead people. Oh, the horror of it. There is a strange thing that I have seen under the sun, even in the fundamentalist circles. It is preaching without unction. What is unction? I hardly know. But I know what it is not, or at least I know when it is not upon my own soul, preaching without unction kills instead of giving life. The unctionless preacher is a savor of death unto death. The word does not live unless the unction is upon the preacher. Preacher, with all thy getting, get unction. Brethren, we could do well to manage to be half as intellectual of the modern pseudo kind if we were twice as spiritual. Preaching is a spiritual business. A sermon born in the head reaches the head. A sermon born in the heart reaches the heart. Under God, a spiritual preacher will produce spiritually minded people. Unction is not a gentle dove beating her wings against the bars outside of the preacher's soul. Rather, must she be persuaded in one. Unction cannot be learned, only earned by prayer. Let me just repeat that. Unction cannot be learned, only earned by prayer. Unction is God's knighthood for the soldier preacher who has wrestled in prayer and gained the victory. Victory is not won in the pulpit by uh, firing intellectual bullets or wise cracks, but in the prayer closet. It is won or lost by the preacher's foot or before the preacher's foot enters the pulpit. Let me just repeat that. Um, Victory is not won in the pulpit by firing intellectual bullets or wisecracks, but in the prayer closet. It is won or lost before the preacher's foot enters the pulpit. Unction is like dynamite. Unction comes not by the medium of the bishop's hands, neither does it mildew when the preacher is cast into prison. Unction will pierce and percolate. It will sweeten and soften. Uh, soften. When the hammer of logic and the fire of human zeal fail to open the stony heart, unction will succeed.
What a fiery little beginning of this chapter. Um, and then he goes on to say, ministers who do not spend two hours a day in prayer are not worth, are not worth a dime a dozen, degrees or no degrees. Man, there's something about Leonard Ravenhill that just can get you fired up. Not only does he get you fired up, he convicts. I know he convicts my heart anytime I hear or uh, you know, listen to or read a sermon of his. Um, terribly convicting, yet oh so right. Blessings to you, my friends. Have a great Thursday.